Hi, this is David McCann for WebTNG. This video is part of a series looking at custom post types and theme builders. In part one, I used custom post types UI and advanced custom fields to create a custom post type. And the plan is in subsequent parts of the series to create the single and archive templates using the theme builder functionality built into popular page builders. And so in this, the second part of the series, I'm going to use the theme builder that was just released in Divi 4. Here's the website that was used in the first part of the series. If we look to see what we have, here's CPT UI and the Advanced Custom Fields program. And here's the custom post type and its records that we created. Let's take a look at one. You can see we have a title, the content, some categories, the featured image, and then we have a link to the author's website and a photo of the author. If we view the custom post type on the front end, however, we have the title, the featured image, and the post content, but we don't have any of the other fields. And that's why we need to do some theming. So I've installed the Divi theme. Let's activate it. When we activate it, then we get this new menu item for the theme. And there's this new menu here for Theme Builder. So let's go take a look. So there's the option here to have a global header and global footer and a global body. But what we want to do is create the body, the content area, for books. So we want to add a new theme template and we want to apply it to books. Here's the option, all books. So now let's edit that. And we're going to build it from scratch. Okay, so let's see, I think I want the featured image. Now we need to choose this dynamically and right off it's not clear how to do that, but the way you do it is you delete this placeholder and then you see that database icon. So we'll choose Featured Image. Another thing is that in the builder here we're not seeing a preview of an actual book record. We're just seeing some placeholder. But that's okay. And now in the other column there is a module for post title. And we'll see that not only added the title, but also the meta and the featured image. So we want to go in and turn off the featured image because we already have that on the side there. Okay, now let's add the content. And there is a module for content. Now we need to add our special fields. So let's add a, another image field. And this time we want to do the author's photo. So see it's showing us the ACF book field. So author's photo. And then under that we want to have a button with visit author's website and we want the link to be dynamic author's website okay let's see if we can align that in the middle all right let's take a look and see how this is looking let's go to a book and view it. There is our single template. And that was pretty easy. I guess we should have aligned, center aligned these as well so that they line up together. But that got our custom fields, our image, and our link to the author's website in there. And that was very simple. Let's go back to the builder for a minute. I want to recap here with some observations about the theme builder for creating your single templates. We don't have an accurate preview of the images, so that is not as nice. You can see here 
that what we saw on the front end isn't reflected here in the builder. There's not as much space when we viewed it on the front end. And also, we don't have an actual preview of the post content. So that's too bad. Hopefully, they'll improve that and we'll get an accurate preview of those things. Now let's create the archive. So we go back to Divi Theme Builder. Now we want to add a new template. And this one is going to be the book's archive page. Again, we will build one. This time, let's start with a text box and here we will say all book reviews and we'll format that as a heading one and we'll save that one and then let's add in next the blog module. I think this is the way you have to do it. I think you have to use the blog module. So we want it to be books. It's picked up our custom post type. Now this looks pretty bad. So I think we want a different layout. And let's see what we have here. So there's a grid option. That looks better. So there's our archive. Let's save that. And let's go to the front end and take a look. Whoops. Save changes. Go to the front end, take a look. And there's our archive. So that was pretty easy. It's not quite as flexible as you have with some of the other builders. And one thing I notice is that the, let's go back and show you. This is where you edit. This is where you trash it. This is where you trash the whole template. This is where you can change the settings of what it applies to. So let's go back and edit that. I want to show you a limitation here with this. And that is that on the content elements, we have categories on, but it's not pulling in the custom taxonomy categories that are applied to the books. And that seems to be a limitation with the blog module. And it is possible to overcome it apparently with some PHP code, but it's not happening easily by default. So I've been focusing on just showing content. Of course, a Divi strength is the many number of design elements that it adds. So let's look at a couple of these and see what we've got here. Let's do a slide in, slide down. Okay, so when you load the page, you're going to get that animation option there. We may want a little bit of, maybe a little bit of box shadow there around the cards. We can bump up the size of the title and see what else here. Read more text. Ah, okay, we need to add a read more option. Now let's go back to read more. Let's get a little spacing there with it. And maybe make it a little bigger. And that looks pretty good. To recap on the creation of the archive template, it's nice that we have a visual preview. Unlike the single template, we can see the data as we're doing the design. 
The blog layout, however, is pretty limited. We just have two layout choices, the full width and the grid, and they're not a lot of options there. We can't, for example, make it five cards across instead of three. So this is a little different than other page builders where you have a lot more flexibility with the layout. And it also has a limitation that we're not able to show the custom taxonomy for our books, our genre taxonomy, which is missing here in this space here is where it should show up. But it's certainly easy to create. So this is, I guess, a good start. I'd like to see a few more features with this. I should mention there are some third-party plugins that provide more blog module layouts. So that might be an option. They don't allow you to use custom fields in the layout and neither does the default Divi blog module. So that's a limitation also. When we look at this part here, we can see that it's pretty easy to see the theme templates that we've created. We've got the default, we've got a custom body for the book singles and a custom body for the book archives. So that's easy to see. We can create custom ones as we want to. And this is a pretty full featured list of options for the different types of layouts you can create. And you have exclusions also where you can exclude from specific pages or categories or whatnot. So that's pretty nice. All in all, I would say that the Divi Theme Builder is a good first version. And I'd like to point out that Elegant Themes also has a Divi Builder plugin. And I did try that out with a Page Builder Framework theme. And I was able to create the single template and the blog template the same way I did with using Divi, the theme. So the Divi Builder 4.0 version of Divi Builder also brings the same features and that's interesting because you don't have to use the Divi theme. So this is the first look at Divi 4 and their new theme builder. Tell me what you think in the comments. Thank you for watching.